Chicago writer, poet, and scholar Gloria E. Anzaldua's Today's Accept. 26. Google Doodle. Posted on what would have been Anzaldua's 75th birthday. Google's Illustrated Tribute honors Hispanic Heritage Month while contributing to the current conversation about borders and the rights of freedom of expression and to speak out against injustice. Write with your eyes like painters, with your ears like musicians, with your feet like dancers. Anzaldua, who died from diabetes related complications on May 15, 2004. Urged. You are the truth sayer with quill and torch. Write with your tongues on fire. Here's what you need to know. 1. Anzaldua, who was born in Texas. Experienced segregated schools but wrote to capture the magic of the landscape around her. Anzaldua was born in 1942 and died in 2004. Regarded as an author, cultural theorist, and feminist philosopher, she was born in Raymondville, Texas. The oldest of four children of Urbano and Amalia Garcia Anzaldua. Sixth generation Mexican American rancher farmers, the American National Biography reports. Growing up on ranches and farms in Texas Mexico border towns, Anzaldua developed a profound appreciation for the earth and its riches. She fell in love with art and writing as a way to capture the magic of the landscape around her. Google reports. She also faced racism and isolation. But that didn't stop her from becoming a stellar scholar. Health issues and childhood gave her deep empathy for others. Gloria was diagnosed in infancy with a rare hormonal disorder that triggered premature puberty, including monthly menses from the age of six. This hormonal condition marked Gloria as physiologically different from her peers, fostering in her lifelong empathy for other outsiders which motivated her social justice work and her desire to use the written word to create new forms of inclusionary communities. The biography notes, Gloria's sense of difference was heightened when she entered Texas's segregated educational system in 1949. Because she spoke only Spanish, her teacher mocked and punished her. Despite this ostracism, Gloria excelled in school, too. Anzaldu has influenced generations and encouraged people to embrace living in multiple worlds. Calling life this place of contradictions in a 2016 tribute on her 74th birthday. Latina.com described how Anzaldu influenced many Latinas with her writings and quest for social justice. Her work as a theorist, writer and activist continues to impact generations of Latinas living on the borderlands. Both geopolitically and metaphorically, the site notes, Anzaldu had taught us that we are multidimensional. In a constant state of becoming and despite dominant culture's obsession with placing people in fixed binary boxes, our plurality and its intersections makes us whole and gives us the faculty. A perspective and power that's all our own, Google described how Anzaldua realized early on that she lived in many worlds at once. She was both American and Mexican, both native and foreigner. It's not a comfortable territory to live in, this place of contradictions. Anzaldua noted, she understood that the way forward was not to choose a side, but to embrace a third place, a land of both. Not either, or, Google wrote, Anzaldua mapped this new frontier with her pen. Her most famous work, Borderlands, La Frontera, The New Mestiza alternates between English and Spanish and includes a variety of forms, from poem to prose, from critique to confessional. This striking mix of voices and perspectives earned Borderlands a place on Literary Journal's list of best books of 1987. The Latina.com article contains a compilation of writings from women influenced by Anzaldua's work. For example, Barbara A. Zostida of Durham, North Carolina, wrote in part, I discovered Anzaldua's work when I was a junior in college. At the time, I was struggling to come to terms with my place in the world and in the academy. Was I too brown to survive in such a white-dominated world? Was I too mestiza, too much of a crossbreed? To fit inside disciplinary borders and boxes, Anzaldu had taught me that living in multiple worlds is not an impairment but a possibility. 3. Anzaldua was known for her book Borderlands, La Frontera. The book Borderlands, La Frontera is how many people know Gloria Anzaldua. That's not all she wrote, though. Far from it. According to a foundation in her name. She is most famous for her work, though, editing the anthology This Bridge Called My Back, Writings by Radical Women of Color. Anzaldu also wrote various children's books and poetic works. However, her main focus was the border created by language and even writes in a bilingual manner in order to highlight the distinct troubles with language. By using the two variations of English and the six different variations of Spanish in Borderlands, La Frontera, Anzaldu puts the reader right in her mind and exposes the way she thinks. The introduction to the book on Amazon says that it drew on her experience as a Chicana, a lesbian, an activist, and a writer, and adds, The essays and poems in this volume profoundly challenged and continue to challenge how we think about identity. Borderlands, L.A. Fro and Terra remaps our understanding of what order is. Presenting it not as a simple divide between here and there, us and them, but as a psychic, social, and cultural terrain that we inhabit. And that inhabits all of us. The emotional and intellectual impact of the book is disorienting and powerful all languages are. Spoken and survival depends on understanding all modes of thought. In the Borderlands, new creatures come into being. 
And Zadu celebrates this new mestiza in bold. Experimental writing, the village voice wrote in a review excerpted on the Amazon page. And Zadu is pulsating weaving of innovative poetry with sparse informative prose brings us deep into the insider, outsider consciousness of the borderlands, that ancient and contemporary, crashing and blending world that divides and unites America, wrote Women's Review of Books in another, four. And Zadu worked as a migrant farmer, ended a bilingual preschool and became highly educated. Growing up, and Zadu has spent time as a migrant farmer alongside her parents and siblings. According to a biography of her, realizing this lifestyle would not benefit his children's education. And Zadu, his father decided to keep his family in Hargill, where he died when Anzadu was 14. His death meant that Anzadu was obligated financially to continue working the family fields throughout high school and college. While also making time for her reading, writing, and drawing, the biography reports, according to a foundation in her name. Growing up, her family moved to various ranches working as migrant farmers. And Zadu gained all of her knowledge about the Southern Texas and Chicano discrimination while working on the farm and ranches too. Help with expenses, she went on to receive a BA in English, Art and Secondary Education and an MA in English and Education. She first taught in a bilingual preschool program, then in a special education program for mentally and emotionally handicapped students, the biography noted. Adding that she later taught in a university setting on topics including feminism, Chicano studies, and creative writing. Five. Anzadu had died of complications from diabetes, but her words live on. Tragically, Anzadu was taken from the world too soon. Dying from complications of diabetes, according to the Foundation. However, she left behind her thoughts and values in words. Many people have shared her quotes online, in addition to reading her books. Writing is dangerous because we are afraid of what the writing reveals, and a woman with power is feared, is one quote often. Shared, she taught preschool and special education before moving to California in 1977, the Foundation notes. While in California, she supported herself through her writing, lectures, and teachings about feminism, Chicano studies, and discrimination. In 1974, Anzadu moved back to Texas to continue her graduate and doctoral studies at the University of Texas at Austin. While at UTA, she taught a course called La Mujer Chicana, and this is where she began to notice the lack of material written for or about. Chicano women, her theories had impact across disciplines, including Chicano, a studies, women's studies, LGBT studies, and post-colonial studies. She was awarded posthumous Ph.D. in literature by the University of California Santa Cruz, Google noted. 